Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries here at the Hanover Fairground. I'd like to invite you to come and have a seat, have a drink. There is a lovely lady walking around serving you with coffee or tea. Also at this moment, I would like to say hello and welcome to all our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair here, so all our international guests also a warm welcome. Our next topic will be the testing of balance of plant components. And for that, we'll hear the representative, the head of department fuel cell of the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. So please welcome with me on stage, Mr. Ulf Groß. Big hands, please. Thank you very much and welcome from my side. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk about the testing of peripheral components of a fuel cell system. And to begin, I'd like to give you a short introduction about my department, fuel cell systems at Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. So we are um, a research provider for industry, so we work close together with uh, companies and assist them to bring their products on the market. Our main focus areas are local effects on a cell level and a stack level. I talked about these methods uh, this morning. And we do lifetime testing of components within cells, of cells, stacks, and systems. We uh, investigate contamination effects, whether it's air pollution or hydrogen contamination or contamination by corrosion of components. Uh, part of this uh, I will address in my talk later on. We do climate testing and of course testing of peripheral elements in general, which is my talk today, and system development. So our main motivation is to bring these fuel cells on the road and see them drive on the street. So our job is as research provider, as I said before, to help industry to bring down their cost. C bring down cost means to simplify materials, to simplify designs, to um, enhance production technologies. And to do so, you really have to understand what uh, effects are you creating if you use simpler valves, simpler humidifiers, etc. And this is what we do. So, in general, these fuel cells uh, should drive in a car in very hot and uh, dry conditions. Um, the system should also operate in the opposite conditions, so still dry, but very, very cold. Or it might be humid and hot. Or, what I like most, if, if these cars drive in my home city in Freiburg and at black forest conditions. So we do testing of system components and complete systems in our walk and climate chamber, like you see here. Um, we have in, in the back, what you see here, a gas supply unit, um, a stack test station, which is capable of providing gases um, up to 20 kilowatt electricity fuel cell power which might be an automotive short stack or um, backup power system. And then we have here in, in the front, uh, this black unit, um, we have the capability to monitor uh, simultaneously every single cell in this fuel cell stack. So this is a 50 channel system. Um, and we can monitor the single cell voltage in a system, but not only the voltage, we also can monitor simultaneously the single cell impedance um, in the stack. And this is what I like to talk about. You can implement the whole system into the climate chamber and control and monitor the performance of every component 
in the climate chamber during startup conditions, might be freeze starting conditions, or as I showed before, very, very hot and dry conditions, very hot and wet conditions, cold and dry conditions, and so on. So this is about system testing, but we also offer testing uh, the certain component itself and alone. This is an example where we did climate testing for uh, valves. It's the inlet pressure valves uh, of a company and we did 22 million cycles under different temperature conditions from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 95 degrees Celsius and for the positive uh, temperatures we uh, did also the conditioning of the relative humidity. Another aspect is um, that in this example the testing of uh, um, a heat exchanger or it might be also humidifier in the climate chamber and we check the temperature profile of the component itself. This might be interesting for example, I had a talk uh, this morning where someone would like to test um, the inlet valve of um, a fuel cell car and to test the temperatures of the valve itself. You know, if you reduce the pressure very much, the component might be very, very cold. And to identify if there are some, uh, if somewhere could occur freezing, then this infrared camera might help. I mentioned at the beginning that we also investigate contamination effects. So, um, what is very interesting to test peripheral components in this uh, type or in this picture you see components of a valve only these components which are in contact with the fluid with the gas itself and the gas uh, in in the gas uh, there might be deionized water and if you then insert these components in deionized water and you wait for a while uh, you might see uh, something like this where you see very very strong corrosion other components might be affected by acid solutions. So insertion of the components in different aggressive solutions which are um, near to a, fuel cell, uh, to a fuel cell environment is very, very interesting. The one thing is that you insert this component in a solution, wait and see. The other thing is that you then analyze the solution itself regarding the elements that you find in the solution after a while. What you see here is um, some elements for different components, so each compartment, each column stands for a certain component of a valve and we see that some components showed a very large um, concentration of cations after a while, especially it is very well known that iron is very harmful to the membrane of a fuel cell, but also uh, mangan in these concentrations um, might harm the functionality of the component itself. Chromium is also a very critical component. So, um, as I said before, we can test the component X C2 um, and the component by itself, but we also can test the system all together and control the different peripheral components, the balance of plant components in a system environment and have a close look at their behavior in a system environment and test and control, monitor the answer of the stack if you um, change different components or the operation strategy of the components. And this is very helpful and needed, necessary, if you want to develop complete fuel cell systems. So, coming to an end, and to my conclusion, we offer, as a research service provider, we offer uh, the testing of balance of plant components, also at extreme conditions in our walk-in climate chamber. Um, we perform long-term testing of this component itself, whether 
ex situ of the component alone or the component together with the system. We offer testing of the chemical stability, maybe also the electrochemical stability if necessary, and especially the corrosion resistance. Then we can judge how harmful the corrosion products are for the fuel cell. And we do, of course, uh, test the complete system also at extreme conditions. So thank you very much for this talk. I'd like to draw your attention also to my next talks, which will be tomorrow on a fuel cell stack characterization and the characterization on a single cell level of the components of a single cell and the single cell altogether. And if you are interested, you can have a look at the website and the uh, movie that was made this morning about my talk, Spatially Resolved Testing of Automotive Single Cells. So watching movies is one thing, but of course you are hardly invited to visit me on our booth, which is right over there at C62. Have a, a good cup of Freiburg coffee or a good chocolate if I see Mrs. Kundler there. Um, all of you are heartily invited to join us and enjoy Freiburg culture. And of course, I'm open for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is always a pleasure, pleasure to have Mr. Ulf Groß here, a very friendly speaker. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? Or did you just come for the chocolate invitation? <laughs> then you can follow uh, Mr. Ulf Groß uh, back to the booth at the Fraunhofer, right across. Once again, thank you very much. That was Mr. Ulf Groß from the Fraunhofer Institute. Thank you.